Mm. Good evening. Hope you enjoyed your soup this evening. I want to thank our administrative assistant, Joan, for that delicious recipe. I also want to thank Jim Doyle for being here all these Tuesdays to record our Lenten devotionals. During this Lenten time, I simply wanted to offer people some space to connect ourselves to God, to remember the discomfort of not being in total control of everything, the discomfort of our brokenness, remember our need for God, and also the comfort of knowing God, the comfort of knowing that God walks with us in this life, the comfort of knowing that we are forgiven, the comfort to know that whatever we face, God is there. And it's fitting that tonight is our last night of our Lenten devotions, and our theme tonight is love. A couple of different times this week, I've had conversations with different people about loving our neighbor and how it's such an easy idea. God asks us to love our neighbor, to love all those who God puts in our lives. And there's no qualifying statements to that. We're to love our neighbor if they agree with our political view or not. We're to love them if they have the same skin color as us or not, or they live in the same country as us or not. We're to love them if they have different pronouns or sexuality than we do. We are to love them if they have the same religion of us, as us or a different one. We're to love our neighbors. So simple. And yet, so hard, right? Because we all know that people are complex and different and they don't fit into nice, easy boxes. That people, other people can drive us crazy. And so loving them is difficult. And I imagine the same is true of God. That loving us humans who are so stubborn, so adverse to all the good things that God wants to give us, that God finds it difficult. And yet God's love is one of the things that I never question. It what helps me to love myself and helps me to love others who God puts in my place, even the difficult ones. It's God's love that we see on the upcoming Holy Week. God's love that is so strong for us that Jesus is willing to die to show it to us, to prove it to us. That is what we go into Holy Week thinking about. Tonight I would like to start by having some time of silence to think about God's love for us and our love for each other. The love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ in the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, full of kindness, out of your great love you raise us up from sin and death and make us alive together with Christ. Write your word upon our hearts and restore us in the image of your love, that by your spirit our way of life might become the way of Jesus Christ through whom we pray. Amen. Our poem for this evening is The Last Touch by Delena Dameron. There is a dead mother and a living daughter and the ritual of watching hair. I was too young to think anything heroic about her heavy head in your hands before the funeral. What an intimate farewell. You waiting at the house of a friend, the funeral home, agreeing to your request delivers great-grandma Georgia so that yours could be the last touch. How you moved your fingernails between her wet follicles, shielded her eyes, careful not to splash shampoo because you remember being chided about the burn. You denied the embalmer offer to dress her, denied her the orange lipstick, but gave her the best dress and a heel. Having been a while since she could walk, after diabetes snatched half her leg, this intimate farewell, you rubbing her down in baby oil, whispering, Mama, singing her those thousand hymns, every ready in your mouth. Let's take a moment of silence to think about those who we have loved and who have loved us, who gave us those last touches and who we last touched.
So I'll read our two Bible verses for this evening and once again pause for some silence, read them again, pause for some silence, and read them a third time. Our first Bible verse is 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. And from 1 John 4, 16. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Let's have a moment of silence. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. And one final time, above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Let us turn our hearts to prayer. In Christ Jesus, we meet the God who knows our weakness and bears the wounds of the world, Therefore, let us be bold as we pray, trusting that God draws near to those in any kind of need. We pray tonight for love. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the love you have shown to your people throughout time, your love for the earth that you created, your love that made you create us in your image, your love that set the stars in their courses, and your love that makes every leaf bloom in springtime. God of love, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the love that you showed Noah and his family, the love you gave Abraham that led to the promises of family and land. We give thanks for the love you showed to Ishmael and Isaac, to the ways your love built a people. God of love, hear our prayer. For the love that rescued your people from slavery, for the love that guided them through the wilderness to a promised land that flowed with milk and honey, for a love that helped them build a nation, God of love, hear our prayer. For your love spoken through the prophets, a love that reminds us to take care of people experiencing poverty, for the widow, the orphan, the stranger, for a love that is about serving and caring, a love that does not need to conquer. God of love, hear our prayer. For the love you showed to us through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, a love that knows no bounds, a love that stretches itself to the lost and forsaken, a love that leads to peace, a love that speaks of justice for all your people, a love so deep it is willing to die for us. God of love, hear our prayer. Help us remember your love given through the ages. Help us to live in that love today, through pandemics, wars, and our own struggles to be your people. Let love rule our hearts. Let us love as you, has, as you have loved us. God of love, hear our prayer. Here is some time of silence for you to offer your own prayers to God aloud or in your hearts.
God of all compassion, gather our prayers in your mercy and grant to us what you know that we need, that we may walk in the life and peace of your spirit through Jesus Christ, our hope and salvation, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Christ Jesus, dwell in our hearts through faith, as we are being rooted and grounded in love, strengthened by the Spirit, and filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Hope you've enjoyed these short Lenten devotions during our Lenten time. I invite you to join us for our Holy for Palm Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, both at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, and then during our Holy Week services, Monday, Thursday at 7, and Good Friday at 7 as well, and of course, Easter Sunday with 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock service, 9 o'clock Easter breakfast, and egg hunt, and 10 o'clock worship. May God be with you during your Holy Week.